Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about the yield keyword in C-sharp and how that fits in with iterators. Now, I've made videos about this before, but I think this is one of those topics that having more examples and more things to walk through can really help solidify the idea. If this is something you struggle with, I'm hopeful that having one more video to go look through will help you. If that sounds interesting, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now, let's jump over to Visual Studio and look at the yield keyword. On my screen right now, you can see that there are a couple of lines that have the yield keyword. So on line three, we can see yield return 123. And line eight, we also see yield return 123. Same code. But if I go uncomment this block of code up at the top, you'll see that Visual Studio is not happy with this method. If I hover over it, it's suggesting that the body of this method is not an iterator. It cannot be. And that's because the int return type is not an iterator interface. So what the heck does that even mean? If we think about what the yield keyword is responsible for doing, what it's able to do for us when we yield return is that we're able to return back some item from a method, but the next time that this method is iterated on, it will come back to where this code was executing. So for example, if I had yield one, two, three, then yield four, five, six, when yield one, two, three completes, the next iteration, so the next time that this method is entered, it will start right back here. And now we will go yield return 456. The problem is that int as a return type is not an iterator. Like int is one single item. But we have a type, we have an interface that allows us to work with this, and that's going to be I enumerable. So this block of code up at the top simply won't work because int is a single item. It is not an I enumerable. This block from line six to nine is what is called an iterator. And to have an iterator, you need two ingredients. You need an I enumerable return type and you need yield return. What this allows us to do is when we call this method, like I said, it will enter and then it will end up returning one, two, three. And the next iteration, it will come back to yield one, two, three, and then try to execute the code after. And because there's no code after, it will just finish. But if we did this again, put four, five, six, if we have this now, it will in fact come back and the next item will be this one. So let's go ahead, put a couple of breakpoints on here and run this code. So something peculiar has happened. So if we look at what's happening in the application, we can see that on line 12, we are calling yield ints and then we are doing right line. However, my breakpoints never got hit. I simply pressed play and then we got to this point. It says enter to continue, which is really at the end of the program before reading from the console. But how did we not hit our breakpoints? We literally called the method on line 12. So if I press enter now, it will end. But how come we didn't go into here? That's because this is a property of iterators. And this is, in my opinion, one of the most confusing things when people are using iterators because they're not expecting this behavior if they're not familiar with iterators. This line, line 12, is essentially only doing an assignment of a function pointer. And that might seem incredibly confusing because you're saying, Nick, I literally see right here that we are calling this method. And that's how it looks. I get it for sure. But what's actually happening here is that this is a function and we're just assigning it to this variable. This is not actually invoking this function. And the reason that's not happening is because this is an iterator. We have not yet done any iteration on it. So I realize that's probably confusing. I'll say it one more time. This line here is only assigning a function pointer into this variable. It is not executing the iteration on this method. In order for us to do that, we need to actually perform iteration to cause these breakpoints to get hit. Let's instead look at this code that I've just added here, which has a for each loop calling yield ints. Now, of course, this is slightly different. I mean, this code right here is very similar, but what I'm doing now is I'm walking through every element that comes back from this iterator. This is iterating over the iterator. So if I go run this now, right, the first block of code still did not get hit because like I said, line 12 is just assigning a function pointer. If I press enter at this point, we will see that we get one, two, three. So this breakpoint is actually hit now. If I press F11, you'll see that it's coming back into this for each loop. If I hover over here, it's going to say got number and then one, two, three is the value that comes out of that. 
If I press F11 again, let's see where we end up. So we'll walk through, and now we're back up at the top of the full reach loop, and we're going to ask the iterator, do you have anything else? And if we do that, see how now we've jumped to line nine. So it started execution back after line eight. We've already run line eight from our iterator. That's what gave us one, two, three the first time. And now it's come back to where it needed to continue executing, which is at line nine. So returning four, five, six. So if I press F11 again, we'll come back to this for each loop. And now we will write out four, five, six. From there, if I just finish executing it, if we look at the console, we can see that we got both of these numbers coming back out. Before we continue on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have courses available on Dome Train. If you're just getting started in your programming journey and you want to learn C Sharp, you can head over to Dome Train. I have a Getting Started in C Sharp course. It's approximately five hours of content taking you from absolutely no experience to being able to program in C Sharp. And after that, I have my Deep Dive course, which will take you to the next level with another six hours of content so that you can start building basic applications. Head over to Dome Train and check it out. Let's head back to the video. Now, I did mention that this is a function pointer, so what I want to do is show you that if I copy this from line 12 and I put it here, right, if I run this now, it will have the exact same behavior. So again, the first time, this part here from line 12 to 14, that's not actually going to hit any breakpoints. And we'll see that just as I pressed F5 and this spun up, we can see enter to continue. But as soon as I press enter and we go into this part on line 16, enter, as soon as that happens, you can see Visual Studio has this in keyword kind of grayed out, but that's suggesting that's on the call stack here. And now we can see we've hit line eight where it wants to yield return one, two, three. So pressing F11, again, same pattern that we saw before. Now, the next thing that I want to bring up, because this is yet again, something else that people seem to get stuck on, or they end up making mistakes because they don't realize it. But an iterator, when we do this type of assignment here, this is not a collection. I know that it looks like it because we literally have one, two, three, and four, five, six coming back. However, it's not a materialized collection. It's not a list and it's not an array. That means that if you were to call yield ints again, or in fact, if we were to call yield ints result one more time, it is going to execute this method one more time. And just to prove it to you, what I'm going to do is copy and paste this. Let's go ahead and comment out this code up here so we don't have to go wait, but I'll put a breakpoint here and I'll put a breakpoint here. So when we start these for each loops, we can see it stepping into the code. What we should observe is that this method literally gets called twice in its entirety. And that's because yield int results, the second time we go to do this, it's not working with an array or a list or a materialized collection. It literally has to go run the entire method once more. And after I show you this, I'll explain why that could be impactful. Starting things off, I hit the breakpoint on line 16, pressing F11 a couple of times. We'll start to get into this yield ints iterator. So coming back out, right, we're going to print out one, two, three, then four, five, six. This is exactly what we saw before. Now, when I get down to the next for each loop here, remember, I did say that there's no array and there's no list. This stuff has not been materialized anywhere. So when we go to do this once more, it will go back into the method and it's going to repeat the entire thing. So you might be saying, well, Nick, that doesn't really matter because this is so simple. One, two, three, and four, five, six. We just have two numbers. And you're totally right. This example is very basic. That's the whole point of me trying to make these really simple videos. However, what I want to do is explain why this could be tremendously impactful. When I show you these types of tutorials, obviously the code examples are very simple, but I want you to try and think about what this could look like in production code. Because the reality is I'm hoping that you're trying to build things and that you're coming across different challenges and looking up tutorials just like this one to see how it will fit into your code. This yield return example here is very simple, but let's imagine for a moment that this method was instead trying to yield back results from a database. We've executed a query and we're saying, hey, for each item that comes back, let's yield return it. What that ends up looking like is something like this, where we say at the beginning, we need to open a connection. And then from there, we need to execute the query. Copilot's trying to help me out here, so that's great. And then we would do something like uh, read the results and yield them back. Okay, so this is sort of the pattern that you would have if you were working with a database. 
right? So again, open the connection. Let's imagine that this takes, I don't know, um, <laughs> Copilot's saying takes a long time. Yes, for a computer, relatively, it's going to be a long time, but let's say it takes 500 milliseconds. I'm just making up numbers, right? Execute the query takes, um, let's say it's actually a pretty slow query. It's going to take one full second, so a thousand milliseconds. And then actually reading the results back is pretty quick. So let's say it's only 10 milliseconds. So it's streaming the results and it's pretty quick. These are just totally contrived numbers, but I just want you to think about what this means. If we had to go run this code again, and we had to do code like this, where we needed the results twice, What's going to happen is that for this block of code from line 20 to 23, it will take 500 milliseconds plus 1000 milliseconds plus 10. So 1510 milliseconds in total to run this block of code. Now, if we were to go call this code again, it's going to go repeat the exact same thing. And that doesn't mean that it's just using the same results that we just got. It literally means that we will go make a connection, go read back the results and yield them, right? So you are paying that performance penalty one more time. So in different applications, this could have a tremendous impact. One of the ways that you can work around this is putting these things into a collection. So just as an example, if we imagine that this stuff was actually running, maybe I'll actually go ahead and I will put some thread sleeps in here so we could do... Um, thread dot sleep and I said 500 milliseconds here and then we'll do a thousand we'll see what this actually looks like right so we'll do 10 here this is super quick but doing this type of thing uh, and it's going to be yielding them back so it's not 10 in this example it's not 10 per uh, result it's just going to be 10 uh, to get both numbers back this part that I have highlighted is functionally what we had before, but I'm trying to show you that we're simulating some real world penalties going on here. Let's go ahead and run this example. Now I'm going to go ahead and take these breakpoints off and let's see what happens. Starting things off, we see that we get the numbers and then it had a delay before the other two numbers. It's pretty quick because I didn't pick really long times, but if I run it one more time and we pay close attention, there's a delay, then the numbers, and then the other numbers. So there's a delay twice between the two sets of numbers. One way that you can work around this, and you need to think about this from an engineering perspective, is what do you want to trade? Do you want to trade the performance in terms of the runtime, or do you want to trade memory? So in this case, the way that this code is set up, it is saying we're conserving memory, but we're trading that for performance. So we're sacrificing our performance. We have to go run the query twice. That's going to have some network resources and things like that. Again, this is a very simple example, but we're doing the work twice, but we didn't have to hold it in memory, but we could hold it in memory. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to say, um, let's put this into a list of ints and I will say, materialized. So what I'm going to do is make a materialized list of these items. And instead of just doing two lists on the results, I'm going to add them through the first time. So uh, materialized, we can add the numbers. And then afterwards, I'm going to use this down here. In this example, what we should see happening is that this code here will end up going into this iterator the first time. We're going to run this iterator the exact same way we've seen multiple times now and every item that comes back, I will add it to a collection. It's called materializing when you're taking the results of something and storing it. Now, when we have this materialized collection, I can go walk through that materialized collection once more. So in this part from line 29 to 32, I'm no longer running that iterator a whole second time. Instead, what I'm doing is just saying, hey, look, we got these things in memory already because we've already done this. Let's just go write them out. So what we should see is that the second set of numbers pops up almost instantaneously. Let's check it out. There's the delay in the beginning, and then all of the numbers just blast up at once. And again, that's because these two came from the materialized collection in memory. We did not have to go back into the iterator another whole time. I'm going to run this once more and just to prove to you conclusively that this is truly only running one time, I'm going to write this part on line 17 out to the console, and that way we can see that if this only gets printed out once, and we've only run this entire method one time. And you can see that after we get both of these numbers back, we see yield ints end, 
and then these two numbers get printed out, but we don't see this get written to the console again. So truly, it is coming from the results. Now, people can easily make a mistake here if they're not doing this, and instead they're just doing an assignment, like I showed you earlier. If someone said like this, and I'm not blaming var for this, by the way, I'm just using it as an example. If someone had code that looked like this, right, it's very easy to assume sometimes when you're working with iterators and you're not paying close attention, you might think like, hey, look, this yield ins method call here is giving me a materialized collection. So what I'm going to do is assign it to a variable and use it again. But if we go do this once more, we will go see that it prints out yield ins twice now. So you do need to be very careful when you're doing this type of thing and working with iterators you need to make a conscious decision about whether you want something materialized or not. If this database call was returning a million records, you may want to think twice before trying to jam all of those into memory. So it's not quite as black and white as I'm making it seem. You do need to have some consideration put into this. Before I move on, I just want to show you one more example where this can get a little bit confusing. And that's because we have I enumerable as the return type and we have yield return inside of here. But something that could happen, and it's a very easy change that you could make inside the code, is to return a materialized collection from within here. And I want to show you why this can be dangerous when we start to compare the calling convention of this method. So if I were to instead return a collection that had one, two, three, and four, five, six. Sorry, that got spaced out all funky. So I'm gonna do this instead now. You'll see that Visual Studio is saying, look, we can't even write this because it's not going to continue, right? Once we return, this is no longer an iterator. It's maybe more obvious from the perspective of looking at this method, right? But there we go, that's one time. Now this all of a sudden is no longer lazy. So again, if I go run this, we paid the performance penalty once, but we saw all of the numbers come up very fast after. So pay the performance penalty before the first two and the second two come up immediately. And that's truly because this did not have an iterator involved. It's the same return type, I enumerable, but inside it's materialized. The reason that this is confusing and I just wanted to call it out is because if you were looking at a method, I know I called this one yield ints, so you'd want to trust that it's truly yielding them back. But if you look at the return type, right? So if I hover over this, we see it's an I enumerable of int. What we cannot tell from the outside of this method is whether or not it's truly an iterator or if it's going to return a fully materialized collection. So keep in mind that a list an array, and basically every collection in C Sharp is going to be meeting the interface I enumerable. But yield return also allows you to meet that interface in your method. And one more final thing is that you cannot mix this convention. So you cannot do this type of thing where you have a yield return and a return. You basically have to decide if your method is going to be an iterator or it's going to return a materialized collection. So the whole point of me showing you this part is just to say, please be careful when you have I enumerable return types and the assumption that you're making. Many times when things are I enumerable return types, people will be trying to implement iterators behind the scenes, but you cannot guarantee that purely from looking at the outside. And the proof is really in this line here, right? We might make an assumption about what this is because it's coming back as an I enumerable, but it truly is a materialized collection. So that is a hands-on example of using the yield keyword and how you can fit that in with iterators. Hopefully you can see how that fits in with doing things like database calls and the decisions you might have to make regarding the performance trade-offs. If you're looking for other videos and trying to understand more about I enumerables, iterators, and other types of collections, you can check out these videos next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.